everyone, in today's video, you're going to learn on how to actually edit a video since I am telling you, a lot of people probably ask themselves that question, but I will show you how to do it. Now, one little thing, sorry if the video wasn't actually uploaded on Friday, it's just because it was actually our three year anniversary with my girlfriend. Please respect that everyone. Either way, enjoy the video and let's start this. to do something completely different today now it's nothing about scootering BMX no sport which is probably a first for my videos now what I will actually do is show you guys how I make a video now first of all how it's basically gonna work is I'm gonna go through the whole things what I do on the PC since there's still some light that I'm outside and I kind of want to enjoy that and afterwards I will show you how Luma Fusion works and what settings and etc. that I use to make these beautiful YouTube videos. Either way, to start it off, what do I actually use to upload my videos? Now, I actually use my PC to upload my videos. Now, the main reason why is because for some reason when I do it mobile, it just doesn't work very well. By that, I mean the quality of the videos just aren't as identical as the PC. Now, one important thing that I actually use on my PC, it's called, um, uh, where is it, where is it? All right, handbrake. Now, what handbrake actually does so imagine let's say you have like a series of code it's considered of 10 numbers 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 9 10 11 i don't know how many numbers i said but um, what it does is it changes those numbers to make it more simple so instead of the numbers that i first said it would be 1 2 3 now the main reason why i actually do that is when you upload a youtube video if the file, like the size of the file is too big, it's going to take ages to upload. So I use that, makes it more simple. And I did notice that the quality seems to be better on YouTube. Now the process to do this actually takes two hours. Most of the time, it depends how big the video is, but an average, it takes me two hours just to do this, but it's kind of simple since I just slap on the video on there and then I just wait a bit. And while that I can do other things, so I can do some multitasking and then once that is done, I move on, go to YouTube and upload it. Now, how do I make my thumbnails? Now, to all the professional YouTubers out there, I'm sure all of you guys probably use Adobe Photoshop. Now, the main reason why I use that is because there's a lot of flexibility or settings, you may call it, to actually change the images. You can add overlays and all that other stuff, do color correction, much more. Obviously, I don't know Photoshop by heart because it's actually so hard to learn. Now, what actually powers my system? This is my beautiful, sexy PC. It took me like probably two years to end up with this. Now, if you're wondering what are the specs, they're not that crazy since I don't need a crazy computer since all of the editing is actually done on my phone, which is great since I can do it on the go and etc. And the application that I use actually makes it very easy, quick, no lag. So basically, this PC is just for like, let's say just small gaming and just use it to upload videos. Now to all the nerds out there, the specs are going to be down in the description if you want to know. Either way, now let's move on to my editing software on my phone. Alright everyone, so this is actually my editing software, so it's called LumaFusion and it's on iOS. Now it's actually an insane editing software, you can do a lot of things with it. Either way, whenever you're actually going to open the application, this is going to be your uh, kind of like main page. Now, you're going to want to go on to the bottom left to create a project. Now, you actually have multiple options. Let's say for the frame rate, you have 
a lot of options, so 60 FPS, 50 FPS, 48 FPS, 30 FPS, and etc. Usually, I always use 60 FPS and 16 by 9 for the frame aspect. Now, the main reason why is because I actually record 10 need to be by 60 FPS. Now, I would record 4K 60 FPS, but it does take quite a lot of storage, and editing can get laggy sometimes. So I just keep it at 1080p 60fps whenever I record. Now whenever you're done creating your project, you're going to be welcome with this page. Now you can do a lot of things. Now on the top left corner, if you click onto this little image, you're going to have multiple options. So you actually have photos, which is the library of where you're going to take the pictures to edit. And then you also have your titles. And you got multiple titles here. So now let's say this title, click on it bring it over here and after that you also have obviously transitions you got a couple but you can be creative and create some new transitions and obviously you have iTunes where's all of your songs <clears throat> now we're actually gonna start with a video obviously so we go here moments and then you go select the video that you'd like to export so I'm gonna just pick this one now, whenever you click on it, you're going to be welcome with this. Now, with this bar, you can slide it to adjust how long you'd like the video, aka cutting the beginning or the end. So, let's say this, and then I press this little button right here. Now, it's going to bring it down here. Over here, you got the sound option. So, those three little bars that are cut here, it's going to bring you those. Now, basically, what it is, is it actually controls the sound for every, like, track. So, you have three video tracks and three soundtracks now the video tracks are actually going to be in blue as you can tell from here but then let's say if i were to add a song let's say um i don't really know which song um i'll just say this one and then if you're going to play it you can actually control it here sliding it down we'll put the volume down or if you want to hear it if someone put it all the way up Now, usually I keep it at the standard zero, but if a clip can be silent, usually I would put the sound higher. If it's too um, loud, obviously I would put it down. Now, if you want to edit a video, you actually click on like the little big rectangle, blue rectangle there. Then you pick on, you um, uh, press the like toolbox right here. Now it's going to open this. One thing you can do is actually detach the soundtrack. So when you record a video, you got the video track and the soundtrack. Now, obviously, whenever you film something, it's obviously going to put both tracks together, but you can actually detach the, the track by just simply clicking this. So now you have the audio track and the video track up there. Now, usually I do keep both of them together or else it can get kind of confusing when I do long projects. And obviously, with anything that actually edits or let's say just Microsoft Word or PowerPoint, you obviously have a back button, which is right here. All right, now onto the actual edit aspect. You click on to edit. Now, you, ac you actually have multiple options here. So you have the fit, the fit mode. So I don't really use this, but you also have cropping. So let's say if you want to make it small onto the left or... Let's say if you like to make it smaller and right or top and bottom and etc. Then you also have the size and position. So this is the X axis. If you slide it onto the left, obviously it's going to go to the left and then to the right is going to go on to the right. Now, usually, obviously, I keep it at zero, zero. And then for the position Y, if you go to the left, it's going to go up. If you go to the right, it's going to go down. Not just that, you can also rotate your project. Now, usually I don't use that very often unless I do some animations and etc. You can also change the size just by sliding this or you can stretch the X axis just by doing this or the Y axis by simply doing this. And I can also do it with both of your fingers. What you do, you take two fingers, hold it onto the screen, where's your image, tilt it, make it bigger or if you just want to move it around you just take one finger and go like that now obviously i keep it at normal let's press the back button now one cool thing you can actually do is uh stop motion i i, I i'm not sure actually how they call it but here is a little plus here 
can actually do some animations. So let's create three blue dots on the middle. Let's make it smaller. Then if you start the project, you're gonna see it's gonna go smaller. Then afterwards, go back up to its normal size, depending on what you've actually selected and the options. Now I'll just keep it normal since I'm not doing any special animations for this. Now let's move on to the speed. Now I can actually control the frame rates. So here, since it's a slow-mo, usually for slow-mo, I keep it at one and a half. That's what I usually do. And then that's just to make the slow-mo look better. Sometimes I do one quarter, but I don't know, I, I, I prefer one and a half. It just makes it look better and more smooth. But if it's a 60 FPS project, then I'll just keep it at normal. And I can also maintain the audio pitch and etc. And then you also got the sound. Now the sound is similar to them, uh, how you can actually control the image. So let's create those blue dots again. If I put one to the middle and then here into the options, if I put the volume down, well, it's going to go play. The sound's going to be normal, go down, then go back up to whatever what options you've actually selected. For the blue dots, now I won't use any motions and etc to actually control the sound, just keep it normal. So you simply press those uh, three blue X here and it's going to remove all of them. Now, in the volume, you actually have a few options so you can control obviously how loud you'd like it. And then you also got an option for a uh, mono and stereo to the people that doesn't know what it actually means. Stereo is basically two sound coming out and mono is one. Now, obviously, if you play a video, the music is going to come out from both of your earpiece or whatever what the heck phone or device you're actually using to play the music or the video. Now, stereo, it's like two soundtracks. Let's say you're recording. Usually it's going to record one onto the left and one onto the right. It just kind of like creates a better like soundtrack if you like to see it that way and then here you can also configure the audio now i'm not too sure and then here you have a couple of options to uh, change the audio i've actually never really used that i don't have that much experience into that now the best part is here you can actually control the image as much as you'd like brightness contrast saturation vibrance highlight slash shadow radius Highlight them out, shadow them out, and obviously control the colors, the red, the green, the blue, and whoops, sorry. And then the last one, gamma and the who. It can also put a filter or a tint that they call it. So let's say blue, it's gonna appear blue. And if you just wanna keep it normal, then select white and it's gonna bring that bring back to normal. Now I'll actually put back the image as it was before. Just press the back button. Hold on, I gotta keep track. And there's the last one. And you have other options for filters. And then here you have more filters and how you can actually control it. Now let's go back. And then here you have also the Gaussian water. How the heck you say that? Also motion blur long zoom box blur sharp and etc and then here you got some extra animations i can actually control by stop motion so let's say here and then here the scale i put it at zero and then here blend 100 percent it's gonna go like this now obviously you got to be creative to um, uh, make some good animations but you have a lot of options and what's cool about luma fusion they always update their software like every single month so there's always new stuff one of the best part is actually green screen now i actually don't have a green screen in this video or anything like that but you can use um green screen videos to add in more effects as you'd like now let's go back let's say if you're done with your project you actually have a lot of options to export so you go press well, first of all, you actually press this button right here, then movie, and afterwards you click photos. Now you can change the resolution. Now, obviously, if you didn't record in that resolution, it's not actually going to report that. <laughs> um, export in that resolution you can change the frame rate, as I've shown a couple of minutes earlier. And then here, the video quality you can use 
extreme which is the best and then ultra is where the special settings for certain clips basically if you want to save a little bit more space you press smallest now i've actually never know what what is actually different when you do on the smallest economy and etc and then here you can change the video co codec so you have a h264 hevc or 265 and then here you can change the audio quality so 48 kilohertz 41.1 kilohertz and etc and then here the file format you can change it between um quicktime or mp4 and you also have 360 vr but here obviously it's just a normal video what's cool here on the bottom it shows how big your file is actually going to be or how much space it will take so you can keep track of that whenever you export then whenever you're done you simply press this button right here and then it's going to export the video into your camera roll now obviously how you export the video there's multiple options but that's up to you to explore with an etc and then let's say if you just want to look at your video into a bigger image you double click the image it's going to come up like this if you want to unzoom double click again now i actually love luma fusion because it just makes it so much more easier and obviously it's better than iMovie on ios now if you'd like to get this application the link is going to be down in, des in the description either way let's get back to the video everyone all right everyone so i hope that you actually learned a few new things about how i actually edit my videos now i hope you kind of like taught you some new stuff and etc and one thing i can say is it takes a while to edit that's why I always ask for a lot of love for my videos since oh, I spend so much time on them. Either way, I think that is all I have to say. Notification shout out goes to this little buddy right here. If you don't have the post notification bell turned on, what are you waiting for? Go down below, click it right now. If you aren't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Again, go down below, click the button right now. And obviously, leave a like on the video if you haven't done it yet, because... Why wouldn't you do it? It's just something so simple, you know. Anyway, I shall see everyone in my next video. Stay tuned for the next one coming up.